All right. What's up, Rich in the Gap? I have a very, very, very special guest here with me today. We will ask her more about herself in just a few seconds um, because I want her to tell you who she is and (laughs) all of that good stuff. I don't want to take away from what we're going to do. So our approach today to the lesson is a little bit different. Um, I hope you get something out of it and I hope you learn something and are able to have real conversations with your parents after seeing this. All right. So let's get started. First of all, how are you today? I'm blessed and highly favored. Hey, come (laughs) on. All right. And can you tell everyone your name and who you are the mother of? I am. Chronological order. Okay. (laughs) I am Maxine Nickens. I'm the mom of Angela Monique, Marcus Isaiah, and Anthony Marcellus Nickens. Yeah, so this is my mom. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Lord. It's her first time on, so I'm excited. Yes. yes, and with Mother's Day around the corner, we thought, you know, what better way to like get us started and start appreciating and showing love to our mothers, which we should be doing all year. Um, but let's just do that and get them on and, you know, like enjoy them while they're here because that's what's important. Yes. All right. So I got a few questions for you. Um, one of them is, who's either your favorite woman in the Bible that you can relate to or just your favorite woman in the Bible, period? Um, I um, kind of, ooh, I'm going to try to turn my head. No, Mama, you're okay. fine. <laughs> um, I think about the woman, a woman in the Bible by the name of Deborah or Deborah. She was a judge in the Bible and she uh she was a anointed woman of God mm-hmm. and uh I just she was a strong anointed woman of mm-hmm. God and so I kind of pattern my life cuz I've I've been among strong women of God my mother my mother-in-law my mother yeah. in love and they've ex- exemplified that in my older sisters and mm-hmm. even uh my aunties uh, have exemplified that uh, a strong anointing and women of God that love the Lord and yeah. represented in us and taught us how to pray and to seek God's face at a young age. And those those are the things when I think of a little bit of her, Deborah. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> how old were you when you first became a mother? When I first became a mother, I was... 24 years old. Um, I was blessed and married to Deacon Anthony Nickens. Currently still is. Amen. Currently married to that young man. (laughs) (laughs) And we were married together. Uh, We were 23 years old when we were married. And um, that was 1985. And then we, uh, we got pregnant with our first baby. And it was I was 24 when I delivered, mm-hmm. and the Lord saw fit to take her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she was stillborn, a beautiful baby girl. She probably was, probably was like, if she hadn't lost weight overnight, she probably would have been about an eight pound baby. But she was like seven three, and um, the Lord saw fit and took her uh, from us. <laughs> But um, we kept on going. Yeah. We went through, that's a whole nother testimony and right. story. Well, with that being your first milestone in being a mother, like, how did you deal with that? You know, it, it, it kind of goes back to having that praying mm. family, mother and father and love, my mother and father, and just my brothers and sisters and things, how we were brought up. Prayer was the key. Mm-hmm. to a lot of things and I remember when I had found out that I had lost my baby I remember my dad was the type of person he, he didn't like to see his daughters go through mm-hmm. the pain you know of having the baby so he'll be at home waiting and praying so once the babies are born daddy's at the hospital but this time I had in <clears throat> it was stillborn my baby was stillborn so my dad, my mom called my dad and she told me, you tell your dad what happened. Mm-hmm. So I told my dad and instantly he just started praying for me. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the words that he said, mm-hmm. but he 
what my daddy was praying for me. And that prayer that he prayed that night, that gave me strength from the time everything happened until we had her little, her little service. And it just, it blessed me. So prayer is so important. It is so important. So I appreciate my daddy and my mama and my mother love and my father love for being people of prayer for my husband on his side and for me on my side. That's such a blessing. It's a such blessing. Such a blessing. Blessing. Ooh, okay. Can you some tissue? Oh, I'm sorry. It's not your fault. I am, you know me, mama. <laughs> emotional human being. I know, I okay. know. <laughs> no, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. Okay, so you talked about how your dad was praying for you and how you um, kind of got into that. But, like, when you got home and that baby wasn't there, like, what was that like? Oh, when I walked in the, in the, into our apartment before we had left to go to the hospital that, that the night before, mm-hmm. and... Uh, I think your dad, yeah, he had put a pillow behind my back, and I, mm-hmm. and I was sitting. And I think I was sitting on a pillow, and when I walked into the back into our apartment without my baby, and I looked over, and there was there was those two pillows that I was sitting on mm-hmm. when when I left. It just kind of just did something to me. Yeah. I, um, but I came on in, and we I purchased a few things for. You know, like little T-shirts. I didn't overspend or nothing like that. I had a place, a, a bassinet for the baby to sleep in. Um, it just, you know, little things. I had, you know, little things, little socks, little sleepers and stuff. Nothing, no whole bunch of stuff. I mm-hmm. Just something simple. I didn't buy a lot of stuff. And uh, it probably something, a lot of stuff came from the Goodwill store, and I watched it. <laughs> Yeah, washed it and cleaned it, cleaned it too. So it that and when I got there and uh, you know, in in spite of what we were going through, <laughs> and I tell this testimony with this too because we didn't have we needed food in our refrigerator. We didn't have food in our refrigerator, right. but people started bringing, you know, bringing food over there. Our refrigerator was <laughs> being filled and, and, you know, have something to eat and, you know, things like that. So it, God just showed himself in every mm-hmm. part of it. it he didn't, mm-hmm. he didn't leave us. He, just like his word said, I never leave you nor forsake you. Mm-hmm. And he did not leave us. And I blessed the Lord for that mm-hmm. because he gave us the strength. But, uh, and it, a lot would us stand together and talking to each other and telling each other how we felt. Yeah. And I, that that helped a lot. And um, when he went back to work, it was hard on me. I, he meaning my dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Deacon Tony, yes. <coughs> Excuse my voice, allergies. But when he went back to work, I was there by myself. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know, it was harder. But I thank God for my mama because she was an anointed woman of God. And she sent my sister, sister uh, Frida Relaford, up to the apartment, to the, the apartment, to pick me up, to bring me down with her, so she I can start get my mind, start thinking, yeah. you know, not be so much dwelling on on the loss of the baby, and yeah. that gave me strength. Yeah. But it's such a blessing when you got people that love you mm-hmm. in your life. It's such a blessing. It really is. That's that's, my, that's a beautiful. Oh, yeah. Just having a good, strong foundation and just people around you that can help you and not just let you mope where right. you were. So right. It's not necessarily that they're trying to make you forget about it. No, it's just no. you're dealing with it, but you don't want to get to the point where you become depressed. So right. it's beautiful to have that those types of people around you. She hadn't called me or nothing that day. I was in the free was at the door. Oh. And so I, I think she may have told, uh, called me and said, Frida's coming up there to get you, mm-hmm. and I, and so I didn't say no. I just left because I knew I needed that strength. So God yes. is good. Yes, He is. That's God is good. 
We love our moms. Let me tell you. <laughs> yes. You're amazing. All right. So as you continue, you mentioned three other children, myself and my two brothers. Yes. Um, as we were growing up and we became teenagers, what was it like for you and dad raising teenagers? Because we were all pretty much teenagers around the same time. Yes. Like I turned 13, Marcus turned 13, and two years later, <coughs> Anthony turned 13. So we were like back to back. So y'all didn't have... Adolescents <laughs> and teenagers, like y'all, pretty much had preteens, teenagers, and then boom. So how? What was that like? Ooh, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, because I'm trying to think. And and I know a household is not perfect now. It is. And it wasn't perfect then, but I I just believe God gave us um, a way to deal with our children each of them on their own level. Mm -hmm. And we just give God the glory for yeah. they, you know, they probably disobeyed some too, disobeyed and everything, but <laughs> 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 disobedient and everything, but absolutely through we prayer, through prayer. We got whoopings. Yes. Daddy, yes. huh? Yeah. yeah. We got whoopings. <laughs> you would get a whooping. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, they respected us as their parents, and we respected Absolutely. them as our children. But they knew where we stood. Mm -hmm. They knew the God that we served because <laughs> we've taught it to them. And I remember times when I, uh, when my daughter, she went to college. Hey, she started college. Well, she was just about in college. Mm -hmm. And she was going through some things, but, you know, I could tell. It, it, uh, so... I decided it was times when I would just lay on her bed while she was at school. She didn't know I laid there. No. <laughs> I anointed it, laid face down on her on her bed where she sleep at, and was praying over her, <laughs> mm. praying over her, and to God be to God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I yes, know yes, but you need you those want, prayers. Yes. Yeah, so she when she came back home, she probably went, "Wow, well, sleeping good." While well, I'm, you know. <laughs> But I prayed, prayed, I laid and prayed yes. where my kids were and anointed and, and just, you know, would constantly ask God to cover them and lead yes. them and guide them, direct them, them and bring them into right relationship with him right. and bring good relationships to them to be around. And, you know, th those are things that we prayed for years and God did it. He was faithful. He's still yes. doing it. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah. Did yeah. I answer your question? No, yes. <laughs> you did a beautiful job, Mommy. Oh. Um, oh, I do recall a time when I was a teenager. <gasps> and I went on a date. <gasps> and I had, uh, I was 19. All right? <laughs> 19. <laughs> Let me reiterate the age. I was a teenager, but I was like 19. Right. And um, neither, me, neither me nor the guy had a car. So you use the van, okay? So y'all let me borrow the van, and I had um, I had came back home because you can you, the garage y'all's room was right over the garage, and you can hear, but I don't know what happened this particular night, and so I came home on time. I did not miss curfew. On time, I was I had got upstairs and I had um, got in the bed and I had went to sleep. Uh. And uh, I remember waking up to flooded text messages. And there's one text message I recall reading that said, Angela, where are you? I'm about to call the police. <laughs> oh my God. I was looking at my phone like, mind you, I'm half asleep. I'm in my room. I had already been back. And I'm like, what is she talking your, about? Your daddy said that, didn't he? Uh, please. <laughs> that was you. That was you. So I was looking at my phone like, what? I was like, if she come down the hall and open the door, she'd see I'm sleeping in the bed. So at that time, like when you're a teenager, that kind of stuff, it kind of makes you shut down. Because I'm like, why would she think I was still out? Like, what in the world? So, what would you say to a mom who has a teenager right now? That because it really makes you shut down. It's like you don't want to, but it's like, well, if she feels this way, I'm just not gonna talk to her because 
she's not trusting me and she's not listening to what like she she's not trusting who she raised so it made me shut down so like what would you say to a mom who who, you weren't bad you were learning i was your first first teenager yeah. so what would you say like just going back like what would you say to a mom who has a teenager now that might not know how to approach the situation definitely definitely moms we gotta trust our kids we gotta trust that what we've already placed in them they're gonna use it it's gonna be there and, and we gotta trust them cause I mean you know I was like and that was my only daughter living daughter so you know we're very protective I was very protective very <laughs> 33 honey and she's still okay Sorry. continue no it's no it's good it's just this but, day it's a little different yeah, and you just yeah. just what would you say it really is but that that trust trust that what you've given them and taught them they're going to grasp hold, grab keep the grasp Graps of it. I can't say it. Graps. I know Shane. They grasp hold, hold of, it, of what you've taught. What you taught. Yeah. And it'll it'll come to them. It'll you know when something start happening. You no, know, you don't. You keep your hands to yourself, or especially when it comes to the daughter, you keep your hand over there, That's and right. I'm gonna stay over here, cause it ain't respect. It, it, right. Respect. So, just you know, and remembering that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's top. That's key. Mm-hmm. It's that's important. I want to keep my body cleansed and in the right standing with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Even mama, mama, daddy can't see it, but just know, God sees all. <laughs> God sees all. Mm-hmm. So, just be obedient. Yeah. Parents, trust your child. Mm-hmm. Trust. What you've told them and taught them that it's going to be all right and they're going to take heed to what you've been, you taught them and, and do all right. So Amen. praise the Lord. I'm sorry. He ended up no, out. you're fine. Don't apologize. You're doing great. <laughs> I, 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 oh. No, you're doing amazing. Seriously. Yeah. That's why me and her dad, thank God for Deacon Tony because he, Helps calm me down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of the wild one, so he helps. Most calm wives me. are, and <laughs> it's okay. You know he what I mean. He helps calm me down because he just he's praying, but he ain't out all, all out there. He ain't oh, the name of Jesus, I sit up. <laughs> he ain't worried about it. He like right. God I gave got it to it. God, and that's that's that. Mm-hmm. God has it. So yeah. I bless the Lord for my husband. Amen. And Angela's daddy. Yes. <laughs> He's wonderful. Anthony. They're wonderful. <laughs> so, okay, with that being said, how important do you believe, believe a mother's relationship with her children is? Not just mother to daughter, but like with all of the children, how important do you believe that is? Oh, that is so important. The boys need it. You know, that relationship with your boys and girls. And, and with my oldest son, Marcus, I remember... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. He was away. As, he was the only one that. Well, not the only one, but he was away at school, and and he would call me. I'd be on a walk outside, and uh, he would call me. You know, telling me, you know, things he was going through, and and he, he just wanted me to pray for him. Mm-hmm. I remember just praying for him on the phone, and just covering him, up, covering him under the blood of Jesus, and and you know, encouraging him, and. I, I do my I do my boys the same way I do my daughter. Mm-hmm. I'm not as over I wasn't as overprotective. They, parents be, always do that. They want to be like this with the girl, but like oh, with the boy. boy but fine. not 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 yeah. totally free. But yeah, they, they weren't totally free. But is be their their leaders. They're called to be leaders. Mm-hmm. God made made them leaders anyway, and. Uh, I just kind of, I didn't let them, they had, still had their, the rain on them. They go so far, I just, come on, come on back here. You're not going that far. Okay, mm-hmm. come on. But uh, I thank God, both of my sons, I talked to them and encouraged them and let them know, you know, this is that. I let them know how to treat young ladies right. and, 
and they're your queen, your wife is your queen, and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, and and that's did I answer the question? Yeah, no, yeah. That's so good. they it's got to be. You can't just focus on the daughters which you love, and you got to focus on the son which you mm -hmm. love too. So they need that same love for their same mother. Same love, same love. That's beautiful. I thank God today. You know, my boys can come and they can come and talk to me about anything. So I bless the Lord for that. Beautiful. <laughs> what advice would you give to a mother who's has like an estranged relationship with their children? Like, what advice would you give them to start to like restore that relationship to get back to even if they didn't even have a relationship? Like, what would you say for them to start building upon that relationship? with their uh, children. Well, I know, <coughs> excuse me, I know that the God I serve is a mighty God. And if they have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a relationship with God, I advise you to get one because that is a way that you can, inter you know, you can intercede for your children. Intercede for, God God is a mender of a broken heart. Yes, he he's a mender of broken hearts. Huh. So he's Don't able he's able to mend every every broken relationship. God is a mender of broken hearts. He's a mender of relationships. So I don't doubt nothing. Right. God is able to bring that relationship back to where it needs to be. And those that never had a relationship, God is able to do it there too. He, he's able to heal the relationship with each other, mm. the mother and father or whoever that's not, you know, haven't had that relationship with their child. And prayer, you got to pray. Absolutely. You got to pray and ask God. For guidance and to, and uh, pray over your children, cover them under the, mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus. Cover them before they go to school. Cover them while they're at school. Mm -hmm. Cover them when they come home. We gotta do it. Absolutely. We gotta do it. Pray without ceasing. Absolutely. And teens, you can pray for your parents. Yes. I remember when my mom, uh, her voice used to go out a lot. And we, I would just lay my hands on her mm -hmm. as a child, as a teenager, and I would just start praying for her because yes. you. That's what I was taught. That's what I learned. So you're never too young to like use the tools that you've learned right, growing up, right. or that you might be learning right now. Like use those tools and just pray to God. He's listening. Yes. He wants to hear from you. So I just remember, like you can return the favor to your parents. They pray for you. You pray back for them. And we did even now. Healer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, oh my God. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Mom. So, what was your relationship like with your mother, my granny? What was it like? Oh my goodness. Oh, let me think back. Granny was protective too. <laughs> <laughs> that's granny, where you get it from. Yes, Granny was very protective too. My my mom, she was protective of uh, the girls and the boys, just like I, I got it from her. <laughs> Absolutely. But I love my mama, oh, mama, mama, mama. Love I her miss too. her so much. Yeah. Um, mama, I I learned mama was such a person. She was just so filled with love. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting in my bedroom and uh, she was down sitting on the porch the front porch and my mom was always friendly just just loving and friendly she is too and people people walking up the street and she just greeting them I just listened to her one day out out, out of my window upstairs and she, good morning or, or good afternoon she just greeting them and just have a nice day and just letting them know you know making people feel special just walking past the house and I was like, wow, <laughs> my mama is something else. But that's the type of heart she had. Yeah. She just she just had so much love and to share with so many, not just with her children, not just with her grandchildren. She shared love with so many. Yeah. And uh, she was a good mama. She was a good mama. She taught me so much just watching her. Yeah. Prayer warrior. Amazing mama. Amazing granny. <laughs> Prayer warrior. Clean, clean the house wife. now. I don't know how she kept the house clean with all these nine kids, but I can't wait to do it with three. But anyway, 
They have an energy. They had an energy that I don't know where God gave them. A Unmatched, special. okay. Ooh, unmatched. Huh. And I thank God for her because I can go. I talked to her about stuff. I, I remember telling her, and I waited a while before I told her though, because a situation happened at school where this boy touched me in a place that I didn't want to be touched at. Mm. So. I decided, okay, I'm going to take a steak knife with me to school in my purse. <laughs> and I, when I got to that school room and I was sitting, and he was sitting there, I said, you, you better not ever touch me again because I'm going to cut you. I, I let him know that I was going to cut him with his steak knife. We don't recommend you take weapons to I school. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't put this out but, there. No, no, this is good. But... I told my mom, I told my mom. This is real life. <laughs> I told my mom what happened. She's like, Lord Jesus, girl, <laughs> don't you ever do that again, you know. <laughs> but just the fact that I could tell her I was touched in a way that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And she, she, but she was like, she didn't like the fact that the boy, you know, had hit me on my behind. Mm -hmm. And then go walk off like he ain't did nothing. Oh, no. Nah. I was just like, but she listened to me, and I said, Mama, I, I wanted, I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was angry at him for doing that. And, and now they call it violated. You violated me. Right. <laughs> and that was not, you shouldn't have did that. Right. And so that, that was one time, and my mama just laughed. <laughs> but she just, you know, don't right. you ever take no weapon to school. You'd be in trouble. Yeah. But, but Why I you didn't I, get caught. My yeah, Lord. I, I didn't get caught. Well, my mama going to jail. Oh, no, I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I have said. <laughs> How old were you? I was. That was my senior year. Wow. Yeah, that was my senior year of high school. I'm learning stuff about my mama. I <laughs> I didn't know about this story. That was my senior year of high school. Wow. Yeah. So. My mom was one I could talk to in, in, uh, with my little stuff, and, uh, but she would straighten me out if I acted up. Right. Even when I got married, and I'd come to her, and I'm like, Mama Tony ain't the, she, First thing she asked me, Maxine, what did you do? <laughs> what did you say? Because I know you. <laughs> right. So I love that with, with my mom, my mom, and I thank God for my mother love because she would get him. So I can go to her and tell it on him. And so we had That's a blessing sides. to have. Have so, love on both sides yeah, for both so mothers. God is good. I'm yes, he is. God Thank is you, good. Mommy, for sharing that. I hope I answered the question. Yeah. No, you did. You just talked uh, about your relationship with your mother. Yeah, okay. That's what that's what we wanted to know. Like yes. that's beautiful. <laughs> All right. So let's say there's a teenager who is dealing with um distance from their parent. Like what would you suggest to them because i know you had a good strong relationship with your parents what would you suggest to a teenager that doesn't really uh, it's not able to like reach out to their parents so to speak and they're just they don't feel like they can but their parent might be accepting they just yeah. don't feel like they can and just like i said earlier to for the parents to trust the children children young people Y'all have to trust your parent. Yeah. You know, and and it's okay for them to say no sometimes. Mm -hmm. If they say yell every time, <laughs> you be out of your mind. Seriously. It's okay for them to say no. I think you should do it this way or maybe do it that way. You got to trust your parents. You got to trust what God has placed in them mm -hmm. that is going to lead you in the right direction. So that's what I would say. That's what I would say. Trust your parents. Right. Trust your parent with your secrets. Mm -hmm. Trust God yeah. with your secret. That's okay, good. that's good. Cause oh, I I would say I would say the same, and then I would also say. Yeah, add to it. Uh, I would also say your parents aren't out to get you. Mm -hmm. They aren't out to like make your life miserable. No. Cause like when I look back at certain things that I was told no to, or that. Um, you know, my parents didn't feel I should do. It's it was for my own good, for my own safety. Mm -hmm. And now, like things are so much more risky. Yes. Uh, just it, with the pandemic, and then with just all these shootings and all these things going on, 
Trust that your parents have your best interest at heart. Yes. I would yes. definitely say definitely. that. Um, yeah. So just just go talk to them like, hey, like start off light and work your way up. I want to talk to you. I want our relationship to be better. Express that to them because they they probably want the same thing. They probably just don't know how to approach you. Yes. So talk to them. Restore yes. the relationship. Yes. Or re or just gain a relationship. Maybe yes. you never had one. Re just gain one. It's, it's a beautiful okay. Thing. It's a beautiful thing because we've had our moments. Yes. <laughs> we've had our moments, but yes, I mean, it's beautiful to restore. I've had moments where I was just like, oh, I do not want to talk to her. But then I'm like, okay, this is my mama. This is my only mama. You know, I cannot be like that. I want her here forever. But the truth of the matter is it probably won't be. But, oh, that makes me sad. Oh. <laughs> but, God is good. <laughs> Sorry. But the thing, the thing about that, even when you were going through those things, you were able to go to your daddy. Yeah. Even though I was jealous. But you were able to go to your daddy and talk to him. So that is a blessing Yeah, on both sides. It is. It is. It's a blessing. Because I remember that those times mm -hmm. that you had a hard time talking to me and you went, you were able to talk to your daddy. Right. So thank God she for said, daddy. She said I was jealous. <laughs> oh, don't be jealous. No, it was just. It was, Some you things know, calls, for, calls for mom. Some things calls, calls for dad. That. That's a good, good, so, good, good. Okay. I'm going to pull this together, I promise. What would be any any last words of wisdom you would give to, like, just restoring a relationship, whether it's between a parent and a child, a um, friend, siblings? Like, what, what would be your final uh, words of wisdom for anybody trying to restore a relationship? Mm, I would say... Bring somebody else in if you need to. That's good. That's good. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Bring somebody else because sometimes you need uh, like a mediator. Me, right. Mm -hmm. A mediator mm -hmm. to help us out. That's sometimes good. We need that. Or therapy. So, th <laughs> yeah, therapy. People are scared of that word, but it's right. good. It's a good thing. It's, it's good. a good thing. So, yeah, bring somebody else in that is going to help and build and and somebody that's for you and that wants a better relationship for you with you and your parents or you and your sister and you and your brother, you know, it. that's that's what I would say. That's good. That's, that's, what, that's beautiful. Well, we are so happy that you sat down and talked with us today about restoring relationships and just being a mother and the beauty in it. Um, just thank you. you I appreciate come. you for being a good mom. Thank you. Love you, baby. Oh. All right, mommy. So let's say someone is willing and ready to restore a relationship with their mom, their dad, or um, even their teenager. Let's say somebody is like, okay, I want to restore. What if they needed a scripture to like think about it and to help them push through? What would you? What scripture would you recommend? Just. I some verses uh, out of Psalms 51 a few verses out of there uh, 51 in verse 10 starting created me a pure heart O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So God's word that that speaks a lot. Mm. That's that's what restoration is. Restore me. Restore me, Lord. Mm. That's what restoration that's good. is. And those few scriptures. It it's was, more. It was Psalms 51, what chapters? I mean what verses? 10, 11, 12, and yeah, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, so 10 through 12. So Psalms 51. 10 through 12. Yes. 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 Very good. That reminds me of when you were my Sunday school teacher. <laughs> my mama used to be my Sunday school teacher. Yeah, well, she's I did. Mom. Sunday and school. my children's she's church such, leader. We, yes. We have fun. Yes. We have some fun times. Absolutely. And now you're doing it all. Oh. <laughs> Guess you passed the baton. 
Yeah, you, you, you rock it. <laughs> <laughs> we really want to encourage you all to have real conversations with your parents yes. and sit down and talk to them because yes. a lot of times you don't people sometimes don't express things until that person is gone. Yes. So you don't want it to be too late. Just talk to your parents, get spend some time with them, have some re- re- conversation with them. And just be free and be you. And okay? parents, love on your children. Love, love on them. Love on them. Yes. Love on them. Even when they pull away, she, away from you like they don't want to be hugged, grab them, hug them anyway. Hold them. I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go. That's good. All right. <laughs> well, see you next time. 30 minutes of reflection. Today, you're going to involve someone else with your reflection. So we want you to sit down with your mom or your mother figure and tell them what they mean to you. That's the first thing. Two, what scripture did Sister Maxine give about restoring? Three, what are some ways you can work on restoring a broken relationship? Whether it's a friend, a parent, a sibling, an aunt, an uncle, a cousin, or even a grandparent. What are some ways you can start restoring that relationship? And the last thing is just sit down and have real conversations with your parents. No matter how hard, no matter how intense the topic may be, they're there to help you and they love you. So have sit down and have conversations with them. All right. Hey teens, what's the tea? So for the rest of this series, we want you to send in questions that you want to ask your parents. They can be hard questions, they can be easy questions, they can be tough questions, whatever it is that you want to ask your parents, send us those questions, all right? We want to know, we want to get in your little brains and we want to figure it out and help you figure it out and help you have open conversations with your parents, all right? So send them in either video by video or um, through email, okay? You can email me at angela.nickens at newbethelkc.org and I will put it right here. All right? See you in two weeks. Bye. Daddy, can you give mama some water? So like, when she <coughs> pull it, allergies. Get it together. Allergies. <laughs> For her. <laughs> That's my issue. All right. So, <laughs> oh, let me get this gum chew. Too blessed to be depressed. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so mom, what was your relationship with your mother, my granny? <coughs> what was, okay, hold on. I'll ask again. Cough it up. <coughs> come on now. Come, come on. on. Come on, sis. You get coughed. Okay. Yeah. What? All right. <coughs> yeah, get that out. I, what do I, how do I, what should I say? Well, okay, um, you can start with your marriage. Okay. Because I'll, I'll edit all this out. So you can okay. start like with your marriage. Like I got married. Just trying to hold out. That's all right. <coughs> That's all right. The devil the devil be trying it, but I we're know. not going. I was just like, my, I hadn't even been hoarse mm-hmm. That's for all right. a long time. That's all right. But God is good. I yes, still got some value. I hear the volume right there. <laughs>